So some time ago I spoke about Operation Varsity, the biggest airborne operation of World War II that somehow no one talks about. In that video I mentioned the C-46 Commando. This was a new plane and Varsity was essentially its combat debut. It was also going to be the last time that plane flew combat operations like that because there was a problem. In a nutshell, the Commando comes out of Varsity with the reputation of being a death trap. During the operation it carried elements of the American 513th Parachute Infantry Regiment. And as it came under fire from German AA guns, the aircraft one after the other started to erupt into fire, with the fuselage engulfed in flames, thus killing and maiming many paratroopers. Out of 72 brand new C-46s, 69 took part in the operation. 19 were lost, 14 due to fire, and a further 38 were heavily damaged. There was some speculation as to what the cause was. In the after-action analysis, the commander's lack of self-sealing fuel tanks was criticized, as well as its wing construction that allowed fuel to actually pool alongside the wing route, thus immediately forcing the fire into the cabin as soon as it erupted. As well as that, the commander's hydraulics were also being pushed forward as a possible culprit. Whatever the cause, however, due to varsity, the commando was prohibited from taking part in any future airborne combat operation. The reputation it got stuck and, well, that was the end of it. Except it's not the end for us, because I don't want to explain why the C-46 was used. There were real benefits of using that plane from an operational standpoint, and in fact Varsity benefited from it immensely, exactly up to the point where the bullets started flying and, well, calamity ensued. I know that's a big statement, given only 72 or actually 69 commanders took part in a force of over 2,500 planes and gliders, so let me explain. As disastrous as the C-46's part was in this operation, it was because of this planes that so many paratroopers could, could take part in the operation. 16,000 men of the airborne and air landing units of the US and Britain, plus their Commonwealth partners, took part in the operation. They were ferried to the drop zones by around 1,600 to 700 transport aircraft and 1,300 gliders. You of course know the Skytrain. Here is the one that I filmed for my Inside the Cockpit series. This plane generally carried a unit of about or up to 24 men or a smaller load with additional cargo, but that would generally not be done for airborne operations. Here are actually some pictures I found during an archive visit to the National Archives in the UK, showing some of the British loading trials for the Skytrain in preparation for the D-Day landings. And Douglas's C-47 Skytrain, it must be said, was an absolutely revolutionary aircraft when it came out and as it soldiered on. But it was limited to 24 men. And when Curtis came along with the commando, well, the commando seemed to bypass the Skytrain in almost every conceivable way as a transport aircraft. In terms of hard stats, the commando traded volume and weight for range compared to the C-47. What is crucial here is, it does not just carry more weight than a Skytrain, but it had double the cargo volume. In terms of combat drops, the C-46 could carry 40 men for the Skytrain's 24 to 25. At least in the British trials, they called like 25 as the absolute maximum. And basically a single commando was worth about 1.6 Skytrains, if we assume a full paratrooper load. And that's the kicker. This is why the commando was so crucial for Varsity. Basically take three Skytrains and trade them with two commandos. Now you are carrying the men in two commandos and have three Skytrains left. Those Skytrains then do what is called a double tow. Instead of loading men, you attach two gliders. Fill those gliders, you get how many men? Well, for the Americans, they went mainly with their Waco gliders, so you get 26 men in total. Basically the same load as one Skytrain, yes. But gliders deliver air landing troops, not paratroopers. They are still called airborne, but it's basically an early form of air assault. They don't jump, they land with ammo, with supplies, with jeeps, small artillery guns, and so on. And every American airborne division had two parachute and one glider infantry regiment attached to it. And each regiment had a field artillery battalion. And those for one definitely need a glider. So two commandos for three Skytrains gives you six gliders for two commandos. Quick maths right there. And that allows you to add those air assault units that are very different to conventional paratroopers. So when the planners were organizing this force for varsity during the planning, 
the commando was fantastic because it started freeing up sky trains that could then be used to go to go to tow tow glider infantry oh, I'm mixing up my words purely based on math now 72 commandos free up essentially 108 sky trains thus providing 216 gliders I don't have the exact numbers for how this ratio worked on varsity, but I imagine I am somewhat close. In fact, in the publication Airborne Operations in World War II by John Warren, the author states that it was agreed that the American airborne should have a paratroop lift of 226 C-47s and 72 C-46s, the equivalent of 370 C-47s, and a glider lift of 906 Wacos towed by 610 C-47s. Based on this calculation, a single C-47 commando actually accounts for two C-47s, that is 177 Skytrains and 24% of the C-47 force that is towing gliders. The reason why it's not double is that probably not every C-47 did actually do a double tow. Of course, the C-46 had already been known to be quite a maintenance intensive aircraft and there had been rumors about potential fire hazards. And yes, out of 96 that flew the missions, losing 19 is rough, 14 of those to fire. During the whole operation, 62 transports were shot down and 402 were damaged. And out of this number, the C-46 losses are absolutely disproportionate. It is likely that part of the blame is the vulnerability of being set on fire. In other regards, the C-46 were actually said to be quite tough. But one other reason is also important, and that is that the C-46 came in the second wave, when the German AA gunners were already on full alert and blasted at basically anything that was flying in the sky. And considering that most transporters that day came in low and fairly slow to prepare for that drop, you can't go at full speed, all the commandos, just like all the other planes, made a very easy target. And considering their vulnerability and considering the sort of the context of the engagement, they really got the short end of the stick. The context here matters as always. The C-46 overall was a good transport aircraft in many ways. But in the first operation where it was used in combat conditions, well, it got the short end of the stick. And that, paired with the one critical vulnerability it had, sealed its reputation forever. One of the cool things about the C-47 and Operation War City is that there is at least allegedly a lot of footage that comes from this operation showing the C-47s. You've seen already some of that in this video, but here we have, of course, a C-47 taking off. And there's another one here that shows a crashing C-47 during takeoff. It's one of the free aircraft that didn't actually in the end take part in the operation. In the background, we've got a couple of planes waiting there. And if we look now in the foreground, we can already see people running away. The C-47 rearing off course. Two things here, as it comes closer, let's look at the rover, you will actually see a little bit of a deflection there as well. So the pilot is trying to steer it towards the right as it goes down this, this bumpy uh, grass field next to the runway. And also notice that there is something strapped below the fuselage of the C-47, I assume, because it does look uh, later on, we can see a sort of so a parachutes with packs being attached to that falling off the aircraft. I assume this is extra equipment that would be dropped together with the paratroopers. If somebody has more information on this, please let me know. That would be very interesting to, uh, to read about. Now, as it gets closer here, you start seeing, well, there's a grab hopper in the foreground, people are running away, and but that looks like a Northern Norseman. You don't see those that often. Uh, a couple of more people running away. And now we start seeing those packs dropping away and well, one truck is getting crashed. And look now, also in the cargo door, there is going to be what appears to be a person soon tumbling out of it. There we go. I'm not sure if that's actually a human, but it did look like it. And then finally comes to a standstill, crashing into more stuff next to the airstrip. Now let's watch that again with full speed and the original commentary from the archive footage. One commando runs into trouble on the takeoff. By the way, make sure you watch actually the initial video about Operation Varsity that I made. And at this point, also a big shout out to my Patreon and channel members. 
Thank you for supporting the channel and I hope that you of course also enjoyed the early access you got to this video and of course I will see some of you fabulous people over on our discord server as well. I'd also highly encourage you to check out this video by my friends over at Real Time History. They produce some absolutely cracking documentaries as well and in fact they have visited some of the battlefields where Operation Varsity took place and also in their Rhineland 45 documentary as well as in this video on their YouTube channel they explain how that operation fits into the wider operation to breach those Rhine defenses in March 1945. But now it is your time to tell me what you think about the C-46. If you want to add anything, have you learned anything new, or do you perhaps have a suggestion for a plane to look at in this sort of irregular series that I have that's, well, in defense of. Put that down below, and as always, have a great day, and see you in the sky.